Be the Talk, episode 347, featuring Honoré Quarter. Welcome to Be the Talk. We go behind the talk seven days a week for tips and techniques to help you change the world. I'm Nathan Eckel, and a talker myself, I'm interviewing others who change the world with their talk. You can too, even if you've never given a talk before. Let's get started with today's show. We are live with Honoré Quarter. Honoré, are you ready to talk? Uh, always. <laughs> always ready to talk. Thank you for having me. Honoré Quarter is the author of dozens of books, including her latest, Stop Trying So Effing Hard. She does all kinds of magical other things, and her badassery is legendary. You can find out more at HonoréQuarter.com. Honoré Quarter, welcome to the talk. Delighted to be with you. Your talk is called Authenticity is the New Black. It, it, you talk in your, uh, uh, your talk about um, it doesn't really matter where we came from. It matters where we're going. It matters what we did with where we came from. And you've come from, uh, a, a, I believe, a, a challenging background. I've already done other interviews today from people who have successfully emerged victoriously out of the foster system. So uh, this is not an uncommon topic. Congratulations yeah. on on coming and, and making so much of yourself. And, uh, you know, I, I love your principle of whatever you want more of, just give it away and then you'll get more of it. So, Honoré, please take us behind the talk. Sure. So um, I was asked to do the talk by a client of mine who decided to do a TEDx event in Austin. And she came to me and said, I'm going to do this TEDx event if you'll be a speaker. And I'll round out everybody else. And I said, oh, gosh, I know people who have begged, borrowed, and stolen, mm -hmm. and, you know, maybe pushed a grandmother down a flight of oh. stairs, maybe, I don't know, just to get oh, a TEDx I talk. I, so I hope not. I, yeah, I hope not. But <laughs> I mean, you know, rumor, rumor has it, that's happened. And so how could I say no to that? So putting my talk together was um, effortless, really, for me, because I had a, a few things that I felt that would be helpful to say to others and a few life lessons that I had shared with others, not in that type of format or in that way previously. And it kind of came together very nicely. Yeah. Well, and congratulations on having clients that become organizers of TEDx events. That's, Amen. that's actually a not so well known way to get uh, on the stage yourself is have clients that actually do the hard work to become an organizer. Sure. So if you're a coach <laughs> out there, this could be some homework that you give your clients. Mm -hmm. That wasn't what I did, but it's, it, you know, coach to coach that that could be. <laughs> be an effective strategy well that, that beats the grandmother strategy that's all i'm going to say on that but sure. just learn learn yes. what it takes to become a <laughs> an organizer do the hard work get a team together and make that yes. happen so uh yes. now now books so i know a thing or two about books i have uh, uh years back in a prior life i've actually compiled books and, and ghost writing oh, teams and editing teams and all of that so i have great yeah. respect for what you do it's not easy sure. whether you do it yourself or you assemble the team to do that and to be able yeah. to uh, to really um, uh, con convey to to clients what really is needed to take their ideas from, you know, at least in my experience, sometimes they come to the sure. table with with a lot of money, but maybe a level six idea and they want a level 10 breakthrough book. And it doesn't really work that way. So I, I uh, I'm kind of maybe putting words in your mouth a little bit, which I don't want to do. But I, I'd love to hear your thoughts on how you've walked people through that valley in addition to, you know, your own talk, which which we're gleaning on as well. Oh, sure. Absolutely. So I started writing books in 2004. I self-published because um, never occurred to me to go get an agent. I wasn't a capital W writer is what mm -hmm. I used to call it, right? Someone who had gone to college Lowercase and had an English w. degree. Well, yeah. I was a lowercase w writer. And, and that, that was an interesting period because if you self-published 10 or 15 years ago, it wasn't as oh, commonplace yeah. as today. So there was almost like a little bit of a stigma <laughs> You know, with that, there there isn't, but you know, it is it's you know, there was a little bit of a thing in people's mind today. It's absolutely so commonplace. 
everything else. So, so go on with the story. I'm, I'm interrupting. Oh, sure. You. Sure. So I had uh, met Mark Victor Hansen at a conference and he asked me what I did. And I was so proud. I think I even did a hair flip, you know, I'm a coach and a speaker. And he said, Oh gosh, honey, everybody's a coach and a speaker. You must write a book. <laughs> he, he popped the bubble. <laughs> he did. He did. And you know, chicken what? soup best... popping, popping the, 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 the author speaker soul. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> chicken soup for the com. Yes. Um, so it was the best thing that um, probably anyone has ever said to me from a professional mm. standpoint, you must write a book. And I went on to do just that. I asked him a few more questions, got a few more pieces of insight and information, and I went for it. And it changed my fee. It changed my credibility. It changed my authority. It got me clients faster, easier, all the things, right? Everything you hear about writing books. And um, the book that you mentioned in the opening is my 51st book. 51st. In between there. Oh, wow. 51. 51. Wow. Okay. In, in, yeah. In between there, I have written lots and lots of books. But as you do things over and over again, people tend to come and pull on your, your jacket, you know, the tail mm -hmm. of your jacket and say, can I have some advice on how to do that? And a few years ago, I shifted from executive and business coaching to helping people to birth their books and walk them through the five stages of writing a book and doing it well. And the reason I think that there is less of a stigma around self-publishing now is because you really can do it as well or almost as well, or maybe even better than traditional publishing. And you're not on their time frame. You don't have the controls of someone else. You don't have creativity stifling. You get to decide everything for better or worse. It all rests on your shoulders and your pocketbook. Yeah, well, and, and from what I know of, of traditional publishing, uh, I mean, you basically have, if you're lucky, you have one book slot at Barnes and Noble, and that thing opens up maybe once a year. And so you're stymied, your creativity is stymied by their shelf limitation, which is kind of silly because Amazon comes along, allows you to self-publish. You're not limited <laughs> by Books A Million or, or Barnes & Noble right. or Borders, which isn't around anymore, yeah. you know. Rest uh, yeah, rest, rest in peace. And yeah, uh, I, I mean, a lot of money. so they I should have made it. I, I got I know I know this is secret sauce stuff, Honoré, but fifty 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 one books. All right, I'm so in, you yeah. know, do you do you dictate your books? Do you do you thematically? Do you have some kind of a rapid process to iterate that? Do you have a team that that is able to uh, help you expedite that? How how does it work without giving anything too proprietary away? Oh, that that to, definitely tells me a lot. Yeah. I'm happy to share. I, I write my books myself. I outline them and write them. I come up with an idea, uh, research if necessary. Most of the stuff that I write about, I'm pretty bossy and opinionated about. So there isn't a ton of research that I have to do. Um, I do rely on a team of professionals to do the things that anyone writing a book would want to rely on a team of professionals to do such as an editor. You need an editor. You do and here's an the editor. one, th here's the one secret sauce thing that I think is logical, but not everyone does it. You know, someone is an editor. If they put editor in that little box on their tax return, where it says, what is your profession? Okay. That's who you want to hire. <laughs> one of those ask for the tax returns. Ask for the tax returns. Well, but your, your well-meaning neighbor who taught English for 30 years or yeah. someone who reads a lot is not an editor. They're not a trained editor. They don't follow a, a style manual, for example. You want someone who can take your rough and bumpy ride that you've created in the form of your words. And that's everyone. And after 51 books, my editor finally said to me, Oh, you've come a long way <laughs> for writing. Now Yay. on, on array so with, with editors, I, I found there's almost two types of editors. You've got the one, you know, English yeah. teacher, grammatic stickler, but then you've got the other one that really thinks through the intent of the book without slowing you down with all the, the jotting mm -hmm. of the I's and the crossing of the T's. Yeah. Uh, do you yes. find a similar thing or or do you see it a different way? Well, you're talking about really two different kinds of editors. You're talking about a content editor, mm -hmm. someone who can read the manuscript and make sure that you're getting your reader from point A to point B, which should be predetermined, right? And mm -hmm. then the second one is the line editor, someone who doesn't read it for content so much as they're reading it for, do you have extra words? Do you have missing mm -hmm. words? Did you really mean to say that? Or did you mean to say this? Right. And then yeah. once those guys are in and out of the manuscript, if you have one or both, you should at least have a line editor, if not a content editor, especially if it's maybe in your first dozen books or so have a content editor. Um, 
After that, you'll have a line editor and for sure a proofreader, someone who goes through that final, final mm-hmm. draft that you think is perfect. You would lay it's never your perfect. life down. Oh. You would lay your life oh, you down. Would, you would put your hand on, on the book and swear. Oh, and it's Yes. Yes. And then they come back and it looks like a crime scene happened with their red pen. But it really does make it a wonderful read for the reader. And you will get more out of it by taking the time to slow down. And make sure that the read is pleasurable for the reader. Yeah, well, great words of advice from uh, Honoré mm-hmm. Quarter. Her talk is called Authenticity is the New Black. you got to check out that talk. And we're going to tell you in a few moments where to go to see that. And we're going to pivot over to you, Talk Universe, as we talk about the Blitz Round in just a moment. Hey, Talk Universe. I hope you've been enjoying today's episode with today's guest. But you know what? Many people want more than that. Many people that listen to Be The Talk actually want to give a talk. And if that's you, you're not alone. Listen to the rest of this podcast. At the end, I'll have a free resource for you just for listening. And we are back with Honoré Quarter. It is time for the Blitz Round. I'm going to ask Honoré a series of either-or questions related to the preparation and performance of her recent talk. Honoré, are you ready? Ready. First off, you already answered the question. You were invited to speak because you had a client who was very conveniently a TEDx organizer, became a TEDx organizer. So my question to you, other very busy people who get invites, all right, two types of people, yeah. they're the type that, sure. you know, of us that are applying, we're applying, we really want it. And then there are other people that also may want it or maybe they don't want it and they're invited and they know they're, they can keynote anywhere, they're jet setting uh, they know they can tweak their normal talk and get by, but not, you know, really give it their all and, and give a good TEDx talk like you did. What would be your advice for other busy people to really do the work to have the quintessential TEDx talk? Do the work to have the quintessential TEDx talk. TEDx talk. Don't please don't pass the opportunity mm-hmm. by. Seize the opportunity. You've been asked for a reason. If you've been asked, it means you have a message that other people need to hear, and someone is probably waiting to have their life changed because of your message. Take the time it takes. Do the work that it takes, and you will be so glad that you did because there is a certain prestige, just like being an author. Right. There are two really cool things you can do. You can be an author or you can be an Olympian, except you can be an author a lot easier than you can be an Olympian. And I think the third uh, corner of that triangle is doing a TED or TEDx talk. If you're invited to do it, I highly recommend you do for sure. Honore, are you a memorizer, improviser or blender? How did you prepare? All the above. All the above. All of the above. Mm hmm. I knew what I wanted to talk about. I knew the different points, like you can't do the wrong thing with the right person and you can't do the right thing with the wrong person. I knew I wanted to talk about that. And in that moment, I wanted there to be some spontaneity to my message. What is a, uh, a tip tool or technique that helped you? Um, I use Evernote for just about everything. So as I was putting together my talk, I put it in Evernote because it can be on my iPad, my phone, and my computer, and I could access that document anytime I had a spare few minutes to think about it. This is the uh, cut for time question. What was the most painful part of your talk that you had to cut out? Um, I didn't. I was given eight minutes, and I'm a I'm a rule follower for the most part. Uh, 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 don't tell. Well, and you <laughs> shaved it along the time, so eight minutes is less than yeah. half of of the time that that many people get. I love that yes. it's. I love that you kept it in the single digits because those get viewed more. It's a lot they easier do. to watch a nine minute or a nine and a half minute or even a twelve minute than a full eighteen minute. So uh, that just yes. tells me that that you approach the craft just like writing a book, and you you were editing. Correct all the way um you know what was the most uh, unexpected strange or just plain weird thing that happened during or right before your talk oh gosh um it's been a minute honestly since i did the talk i think there was a torrential downpour and so we had sold every single seat in the auditorium and it was half empty because people uh-huh. couldn't get there oh my yeah. Oh my. Well, that's that's quite a that's quite a piece right there. Were you an opener, or closer, or in between? I was in between. You're in between. What's your advice to other in betweeners? Pretend like you are the only speaker, and it's your only speech you're ever going to give. That word, let the words flow through you to whoever needs to hear them. 
Well, we've been enjoying the Blitz Round with Honoré Corder. Her talk is called Authenticity is the New Black. You can find out more about Honoré as well as uh, her her services and the book writing and, and all the things that we've been talking about at HonoréCorder.com. Honoré is honor with two E's, Corder.com. And uh, we're going to be back in just a moment with Honoré Corder with the final word of advice. Hey, Talk Universe, I hope you enjoyed today's episode. And if you want to give the talk to change the world, but you don't know how or even where to start, no problem at all. Go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted for my new five day email course that'll show you how absolutely free. Just go to be the talk.com forward slash get accepted. And we're back with Honoré Quarter. It's time for the final word of advice. What is it? My final word of advice is to put together the best TEDx talk or TED talk that you can possibly give. There are words that other people have said that you have said, but I can't hear them unless you say them. So put together your talk and say those words. You will be so glad you did for the whole rest of your life. Honoré Corder, thank you so much for carving out time in your busy 51-book schedule to come on the talk and share your wisdom with Talk Universe. It's been my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Thanks for listening to Be The Talk. For tips and resources to help you change the world, go to be thetalk.com. See you tomorrow.